Welcome back. I am Norstir, and this is uh, my playthrough for beginners using the United Nations of Earth, the the base uh, race from the standard game. Um, without too much further ado, let's pass straight in. So, at the end of the last episode, we were just expanding out. We'd encountered a couple of ships that I think might be alien empires, but we don't know yet. So they, those research projects are ongoing. And we had just adopted a technological ascend ascendancy. So. Get that ticking away. All of my ships are doing things. Ooh, scientist Liang Mao has developed new skills. Expertise computing. Ha! So, we've, that would be good. We've already got somebody with the expertise in computing, so that's okay. But for now, I want to leave them out in the in the galaxy because that's a good. The anomaly research speed is a good galaxy map power. Oh, we have an election. The campaigning to elect a new president is underway. So we're a democracy that does require elections. Here you can see all the people who are standing. And their likelihood of winning. So our, our current president, Dolores M Mwanga, has 25% chance of winning. Colin Merchant, who is a scientist. He's surveying something. In fact, these are all scientists. Koketsu Okeke, Liang Mao. And you can see they have different agendas that they will try and pursue, uh, which give you significant bonuses in unity. So it is worth going for these if you can. However, to support any of these costs 50 influence that we don't have. And it won't guarantee you winning the election. It will only give you a boost to the percentage chance at the beginning of the game when you're really short. Although I think Dolores is a very good is a very good candidate. Because she's got three separate skills and they're all useful. Traits, not skills, and they're all useful. Um we haven't really got the money anyway. So we'll see what happens there. Can't even support anyone. Construction completed. Excellent. Please build the mining stations. Please build the mining stations. System survey concluded. Excellent. An alien nation is hailing us. Here we go. So we have indeed encountered an alien empire. After successfully translating their language, we have established communications with the Valdari Synergetics. Diplomatic channels are now open and all hostilities have been terminated. Note that gives us influence. That is another good reason to do those, those sit reps as soon as you can. So we're now talking to the Valdari Synergetics. They are a mega corporation and they are ruthless capitalists. Note that they are militarist and spiritualist. Doesn't conflict with us, but it doesn't boost us either. So, first contact. Greetings, I speak for Chief Executive Officer Sok De Den and the wealthy elite of Valdari Synergetics. We are always looking for new trading partners, and hopefully we can come to some sort of accommodation that will benefit the commerce of both our nations. So you get a few things you can say. It doesn't really matter which one you do, so I'm just going to say we're delighted to meet you. And they have some strategic resources. You can see that. So one of their systems has a strategic resource. Okay, so there they are. So this this ch this uh, particular arm of the galaxy, we're going to have to try and rush towards them relatively quickly. We may well get the same over here, so plans might have to adapt relatively quick. You'll also notice on your contacts, F1, we have the two primitive societies we saw earlier, ourselves, and the Valdari Corpor Syn Synergetics. Note you can also sort by relative power. They are more powerful than us, because they have a much, much better fleet. I have really been skimping on building a fleet at the moment. But I have got the mineral, the alloys in reserves to do so, should I need to do so. The, the only reason I'm really hesitating is they, they do cost money to maintain. 
Um, but now that we have a fellow star traveller, we might want to queue up a few a few ships. The other thing we can do is we can communicate with them. And if you are going down the diplomacy route, note that I've got a couple of envoys. And the number of envoys you have will vary depending on how you've built your empire. Default's one. I've got an extra one because I am xenophile. So one thing that we can do straight away... And I would... Vo Ooh. Our opinion of them... They view us with suspicion. Let's just try and improve relations. So what this will do is you select your envoy. It will put the envoy there semi-permanently. In fact, I'll just do that with one because there may be another empire here. I don't really want to get into a war with these guys early on. But if I'm going to stay out of a war, let's get them. Let's get the let's get the relationship a bit better. There are plenty of other things that you can do as well. So we could potentially offer a trade deal. I don't really have anything I want to sell them or offer them at the moment. We're doing pretty well for our economy. But it might be worth doing something just to get them on side if they will do something. So we can give them some energy credits and ask for... Uh, why not? Some minerals. Right, they don't want to do that because they're suspicious of us. So yeah, if we can get them off suspicious, we'll have more diplomatic options. All sorts down here. Okay. They have closed their borders. Because they're suspicious of us. I'm going to keep mine open for the minute. I don't think it's a complete loss. So we can no longer enter their territory. So uh, if I close my borders, which I'm quite entitled to do, they will be more upset with us. I've not completely written these guys off. Because their opinion of us, if you look, is already improved by one, thanks to our envoy. So I've not completely written these guys off. Let, let's hope. But yeah, not the greatest starts. There could have been friendlier neighbours than that. A new ruler has been elected. Colin Merchant has been elected. To, and the next election will take place in 10 years. Okay, so they've got a mandate. Which we can see... Orbital research. Now that's a great mandate. So we need to build four research stations in the early game. We're going to be building research stations anyway. So, Brill. Uh, it's, what's he like as a leader? So I'm going to go up to my government. Well, he looks very gritty. Uh, resilient, that's a bit boring. And expansionist, so starbase influence cost. That's pretty good. We are, of course, short of influence. So, you know, I'll take that. And then our president's reign came to an end and she hadn't fulfilled her mandate. So we don't get the bonuses. Just notice when you get a president elected, they are elected from your leaders. So one of our science ships has actually stopped functioning. Presumably the one that Colin Merchant was on. So let's recruit another scientist. Hey, we've got some young ones. Brill. I'm going to go for the youngest. I don't think we've got... Yeah, that's fine. Going to go for the youngest. And then... Let's finish off the surveys here, 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 and here. We're probably going to struggle to catch to get this area. Be, they'd be really foolish if they let us, but um, you never know. And that can go. So hopefully we don't have the same situation over here. It'd be nice if they were a bit friendlier. System survey concluded. That's nice. Keep going. Hey, we've got a second ship down there. Of course, we can't go any further. So, in fact, yeah, if you could do the same up here, just get this surveying done as quickly as possible. Thank you very much. 
our governor is leveled up. That's great, because, again, every level is a tiny little buff. Construction completed. We have briefly detected some unusual energy readings emanating from this planet. It might have been a glitch in our systems, or it could be a sign of something else. Again, it's routine. I'm happy to research this. Now, especially in this area, other people might capture it. So we do want to make sure to get these out of the way where we can. And our construction is complete. I am going to go straight into Sathema. These are good systems to get, because potentially later in the game we can get these people as our friends. And we want to keep moving towards these aliens to cut to block off as much of that as we can. So if we can get this system, we've protected all of those stars. Empire Sprawl is ticking up a little bit. If we go to F... Construction completed. If we go to the contacts, you can see the relationship is improving. They're still suspicious of us. <laughs> Now, given as they're a little bit hostile, I think I might actually build some ships. Um, so I'm going to go into the fleet manager, just have a quick look. We've got, yeah, we've done nothing with this so far. Ship designer. I don't think we've got much tech. Nope. Um, so I'm going to build a second design. I like to have a missile boat as well. So if we go for Corvette, which is pretty much the only thing we can build, I'm going to go for a missile boat as well. Picket ships, just bear in mind, they are extremely good short-range short ships. Um, good at shooting down missiles and things like that. And I'm not going to go too mad here, I'm just going to auto-complete. There we are, very pretty, and find a nice name. Polecat, that will do. Save that design. You see it now appears. And in the fleet manager, I can now add that ship design to the fleet. Polecat. And I like to have a fairly even mix of missile boats and interceptors. So let's do that. Oh, we can upgrade the ships as well. Interesting. Let's also do that and reinforce. So you can do it a lot from this menu. And we can assign a leader. Admirals are really good. I would recommend admirals. So we have a very enthusiastic one who costs less. Meh. Somebody who lasts a bit longer, me. Somebody who gains experience a bit longer, faster, me. I'll probably go for the cheap one purely because they're the youngest. Voila! Construction ship there, please build some research stations. Remember that agenda? Brilliant agenda to have because we're doing it anyway. The first fleet's upgrading. We are receiving a transmission from the Conclave of. Lantok. They appear to have successfully translated our language. Now, they researched us before we researched them, so we don't get the influence bonus, which is annoying. Way Okay, so good news. They are xenophiles. And, alright, they're spiritualist. So, yeah, good. High, in High Inquisitor Sean Lawtoon. Wonderful to meet you. We are delighted, delighted to meet you. So these guys are xenophile, so they're probably going to like us a lot more already. Wow, they're, al they're already in a federation as well. Interesting, so let's communicate with them. Oh, they're suspicious of us. Oh, because we're a new contact, yeah. But let's improve relations here as well. Excellent. So there is a federation here. That's one of the starting origins, is you can start in a federation, which means there's probably some other... Well, there can't be a federation of one, so there's definitely some other aliens around here. All good. I'm just going to leave them improving relationships for the minute. Oh, where are they? Okay, so there they are. So again, if we rush, we might be able to get them. Oh, they've closed their borders as well. Again, I'm not going to reciprocate this yet, because there is a chance that they will uh, open their borders if we stay friendly. And I, and closing our borders to them, even though they've just done it to us, will hurt. 
Ship upgrades applied. Wonderful. Ship upgrades applied. Brilliant. So you'll notice our fleet is slightly more powerful now. Okay, so factions. These pop up relatively early in the game as your population increases. Um, and they are based on... If we go to demographics... No, government. No. I can't remember where it says it now, unfortunately. But you can see it on your planets. You can see that there's a range of different... Um, uh, ethics that your pops have. So we are mu we've got lots of xenophiles, tiny number of militarists, loads of egalitarians, some spiritualists, some materialists, and some pacifists. So as the number of pops in your empire grows, you will find that, say we get a huge number of egalitarians, no shock, the first faction is Citizens for Freedom. Their members work for equality and justice. Um, a disgruntled faction will be a source of trouble, but one that improves with the government's actions could be useful. This is extremely true. So you've got a factions button down here. They also show up at the bottom of your sit rep. I'm oh, sorry, your outliner. So in this particular case, these guys love us. They absolutely love us. Note, though, this is the thing that's really good. They are going to give us extra influence. And in this case, so they like us because we have a democratically elected government. We're allowing free movement, reproductive freedoms, and we don't have a stratified economy. So they're really easy to keep happy at the moment. It does get more difficult as the game goes on, because as the game goes on, you'll have a bigger range of uh, pops coming up. Here we go. We are receiving a transmission from the Endurga Transstellar. They appear to have successfully translated our language. They are a pacifist megacorp. But they allow slavery. That's not good. We don't like slavery. Anyway, we're delighted to meet them for the minute. We don't want to have a fight. So here we go. Ah, no. So there's that good system I wanted. Gone. I'm wondering about this one now as well. Maybe that's part of this federation. So note they're the same colours. They're going to be in the federation together. Yeah, no shocks there. Disappointing. Oh, and look at Sirius. It's nearly an actual colony. It's an actual colony. And then we're receiving another transmission, so I'm guessing it'll be around here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Evangelizing Zealots. Again, they're Xenophile. So the good news is we have at least found some Xenophiles near us. We're delighted to meet you. Construction completed. Well, a lot going on here. Right, pause. Okay, so we have a feedback from an anomaly. Glancing hit. While approaching Erasmodon 3, the UNS Walter Raleigh suddenly received a glancing hit by several passing mass driver rounds. The projectiles are billions of years old, and based on their trajectory, they appear to be stray rounds fired from a neighbouring galaxy. After missing their intended target, they continued on their journey for untold millennia, until today. The rounds we have recovered are of an advanced design, despite their incredible age. Nice. We've encountered something in Conviab, called Sliffs. Let's find pause. Where's Conviab? They are hostiles. Another good reason to build your fleet is because they can fight hostile aliens. Um, that's a bit annoying because that's the area we desperately want to expand. Ooh. Ooh. Look out for green on the map. That is a habitable planet, which we need to go and snipe from these guys as quickly as possible. So whatever hostile that was is 560. Our entire fleet at the moment is less than 200. So we won't be sniping them quickly. I'm hoping it's... I'm hoping it's something that's migratory. It wasn't there at the start, so hopefully it will disappear again. And it's important enough that I'm going to leave this science ship bouncing around. We'll check that one a couple of times. 
Meanwhile, this guy's got to do something useful. So if you can go and get this system with loads of resources, that's probably the best we can do. Yep, hostiles. And then Sathama. If you could build the observation posts, because we've got primitives here, they're going to be really good for society research, which is the green one. And again, because this is blocking us, let's do the research as quickly as possible. You never know. We might be able to come to some sort of an accommodation with them. We have discovered another archaeological site. The echoes inside. Readings from Erasmodon 3 reveal that it was once mostly covered by lush vegetation. Now the forlorn orb is little more than a barren rock. This sounds very similar to our previous <laughs> missions, but this is an archaeological site. Despite lacking any noteworthy tectonic activity, sensory scans of the planet have registered puzzling seismographic data. Something is moving underground. Something big. This warrants further investigation. We can't actually investigate that yet because it's outside our borders. But cool. We may or may not get there first. System survey concluded. Right, you guys. Go passive and just go and have a look here and see if these guys, if these aliens really are as hostile. Again, if they're set to evasive, they will not move into anywhere where they think there is an alien. Oh, it's a planet! Arctic world. It's okay. It's not a tropical world or a continental. Here comes another faction. Again, if you remember, we had about 30% uh, xenophiles. So no real shock that it's the Alien Suffrage Association. Their members have been pushing hard for friendly relations with alien species. So again, let's go and have a quick look at these guys. Factions. Notice these guys have a couple of red dots. So they mostly love us, but not, not completely. And the amount of influence you get is based on number of pops and how happy they are. So let's go have a quick look. So these guys want, they're happy about our indirect xenology, no purges, that we welcome refugees. They don't like us invading primitives. And they love new contacts. They'd also like us to be in a federation. And enlightening primitives into the wonders of a space age, which we may well do later. Nice. I'm not going to do anything else with them at the minute. They're mostly friendly. So yeah, these aliens... Anomalous readings registered. We don't want to go too close. There they are. Hopefully they are not going to cause us too much trouble. I can't really risk sending my construction ship in there. If we go too close, they will attack us. But what I could do is at least get my scout ship out here now. So if you go there, please, and so, uh, survey that system. Brilliant. And as soon as they're out, I'm just going to set them back to evasive again. And finally, just towards the end of this video, you may have spotted a little red bag. That means we have an unemployed pop on Alpha Centauri. So we can now build something for this pop to do. Look, unemployed. Um, we cannot build buildings. Note the number five. We can only build that building once we have five pops. So at the beginning, we have to build districts. Um, and I always think of districts and buildings in this way. New York City is a city district. It has many buildings inside it, like the UN. Um, you have a limit to the number of districts. So you do have to be a bit careful, but you can build as many city districts as you want. Um, this planet's quite small. We're not really lacking for anything either, so that's a good that's a good sign. Um, maybe I'm going to use this one as a research planet. Yeah, maybe. Um, for now, then, I'm going to build a city. 
So we get a clerk, but mostly importantly, we get loads of housing. Nice, because our housing is virtually at the bot at the top. It's virtually full, so let's get that going. Note it puts a big dent in our minerals. They are expensive. But that's fine. So Alpha Centauri, my goodness, showing some serious danger. So we're probably reaching the end of that episode. So we have found a xenophile. A fr uh, friendly is a strong word, but a not openly hostile um, set of aliens. We've got a yet another hostile creature doing something. And we found a less friendly group of aliens who we are at least improving relations with. Hopefully at some point they'll decide that they like us. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please like the video, please subscribe. And if you want to ask me questions in real time, please come and check my Twitch. I will be playing Stellaris midday on a Sunday, British summertime. Details are below. Thank you so much for watching.